I want to welcome everybody to His Glory Nation as we close out our series in the book of Daniel tonight. We'll be in Daniel 12, which is a magnificent uh, blessing that Daniel saw the end times and how our, our Savior, our kinsman, Redeemer, our Goel, Jesus Christ, comes back to redeem the land deed and bring in uh, the thousand-year reign and fulfill the Davidic covenant. So a blessed time as those times are at hand as we see the closings of uh, God's uh, time uh, here on earth. We see the signs and the seasons all around us. All we have to do is look at the look at look, look at the news and we see that God's prophecy is being fulfilled before our very eyes and the end time is near. We see Psalm 83 war upon uh, upon us. We see that uh Isaiah 17:1 could happen literally any day. Uh yesterday Israel uh bombed an area just outside of Damascus. So we know the day of uh, Damascus being destroyed in one day is, is upon us. It could literally happen any time. And then, of course, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war uh, that we are going to do a special word of his glory coming up next week on the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war because these, uh, these prophecies are coming to pass and we need to put those in pers uh, perspective uh, from the Lord. So look forward to that next week. So as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God. It's our Savior who is coming in Daniel 12, Christ our King. Praise his name. So as we start, Daniel 12, 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, Michael the archangel, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of our people, of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, even to the time your people shall be delivered and everyone who is found written in the book. So here we go. Michael is standing up again. Michael is the archangel who is, uh, always goes out and fights on behalf of Israel, fights on behalf of the Lord. This is a literal battle that we'll see in the end times. And this is also a spiritual battle. Remember, Dan, or Michael was the one that took on the principalities of the demonic. Satan, uh, the principalities of uh, Greece, and the principalities of, of Persia. Again, Michael's going out to fight those uh, principalities of the evil one. And the evil one's uh, uh, demonic trinity. Uh, Satan, the false prophet... And the Antichrist are all going to come to the end at this particular time. And uh, there are some scholars will say this event has already happened under the day of um, Antiochus Epiphanes. Those scholars are called preterists. They believe everything in the Bible has literally been f fulfilled. Um, that is very troublesome on many, many levels. This is obviously being talked about a future time and a time of the day of the Lord that the world has never seen. And uh, we, we're going to see that expositional constancy, again, the fancy theological term to say the Holy Spirit is always consistent with its idioms, its symbols, and its wording throughout all the scripture so that once we know the pattern of the Lord, the Holy Spirit reve reveals that. And all the ancient prophets spoke of this particular time. It's not just Daniel seeing this. Every prophet saw end time, latter day prophecies. We started uh, earlier about Ezekiel 38 and 39. It is my belief that the Ezekiel 38 and 39 uh, war will come after the rapture of the church and that will be the, king, the, the, the starting of the tribulation because of that great war where God stands in and supernaturally fights off Israel's enemies. A hudna, a false peace from the Islamic uh, Antichrist will come in to create a false peace and that will be the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. So here also in verse 1 they're talking about everyone who was found written in the book. It's talking about the end of Revelation, the Lamb's Book of Life. And when the books are open, the white throne judgment, we as Christians who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the first covenant saints who believed in Je Jehovah God through faith, not works, faith, not rituals, faith, not tradition, will have everlasting life with our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Daniel 12, 2, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So Daniel's referring to the, um, the, 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 the body being reconciled. Everybody will be reconciled. Their body, we will go back to flesh. Whether you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or not, you will be resurrected. 
on that resurrection day. For those saints uh, that are raptured, as we know in Thessalonica, in the twinkle of an eye, those who are dead will be uh, reconciled or um, given in their glorified bodies, and those who are alive will be caught up to meet the Lord. Um, and those who are tribulation saints will be uh, resurrected at the end. Uh, and then those who are going to the lake of fire, whose names have been removed, as it's talking, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those are the souls that have rejected Jesus Christ and Jehovah God and will be thrown into the lake of fire, fully resurrected, but the souls will be in torment and flesh in torment away from the God Most High because of their choice. God didn't do it. God's intention from the day he built Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden is that every single name was written in the book of life. Go back to our teaching in Revelation 22. It says the names were removed. So if your name was removed from the Lamb's book of life at the white throne judgment and you were thrown into the lake of fire, being removed tells you that it was once in there. So God's intention when he built the earth and built every single human being to ever live in all called children or called creations of God. We're all creations of God, but we're not all children of God. We become a children of God by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the way, the truth, and the life. And if we reject that, as it will happen in the end times, rejecting the, the, the name of the true God, uh, Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and taking on the name of the beast, or taking the mark of the beast, that's just not being fooled into taking some uh, ridiculous mark. That's knowingly making a, a allegiance to a false god, and that's Satan. And we see that all the way back in the beginning of this book, in the book of Daniel, where uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar told them to bow down and worship the statue of himself. That's, that was a precursor of what the Antichrist is going to do, to bow down and worship another god that is not the true god, the only god, the god of El Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So that, in uh, verse 2, is talking about uh, the white throne judgment. Uh, Daniel 3, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness will light the stars forever and ever. So those who, who are wise shall shine. Again, it's the wisdom of the Spirit. It's the wisdom of our heart, accepting the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That is the only wisdom. It's not intellectual wisdom that we learn with our mind. It's the spiritual wisdom that we can only get through love, agape love, and opening up our heart, letting the Holy Spirit share the scripture, sharing what this means, why Daniel is telling us these things thousands and thousands of years before they happen so that we're prepared and we're aware and we cannot be fooled by the evil one in this demonic trinity. So that's what it's saying, and it's not by our own merits. It's by God's merits. It's only our faith and our heart and our love makes us wise. And as the scripture says, we'll shine. We'll be like the morning star, and the morning star is our Lord and Savior, Christ the Lord, and we'll be like the stars forever and ever, meaning eternal life with Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, in perfect harmony and unconditional love and glory. Praise his name. We can't wait for that day, and that day is upon us. Daniel 12, 4, but you, Daniel, shall shut up, the, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. This, uh, th this passage has had people uh, through the centuries uh, perplexed. that they, Some came up with, there's two Daniel, or there's another Daniel book. Um, shut up the words and seal this book until the time of the end. Um, I think what God is, is saying here is, is take, take the word that the text says, in the context of the text, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Are we talking about it today? It's unsealed. We're talking about it because God wants us to talk about it. It is in his, it is in his holy word. And the time of the end, there's no question we are in the time of the end. Every single prophetic event is falling into God's calendar perfectly, perfectly. And this is not something to get all worried about because the world is melting down. It's something to give praise and bow down to the one and only Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior because through his blood, his redemption, and his love, the yoke will be light and we have a future home which is on high, everlasting with our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts. And the troubles, the pains, the sufferings, the heartache, the famines, the, 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 the wars, the, the every horrible thing that sin has created on this earth will be wiped out once and for all because of our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts coming back to redeem the land in the name of 
our coming king. Praise his holy, holy name. Here's the other interesting thing that tells you about prophecy. And he says, until the end, uh, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So we're seeing that now as, a, a, again, prophecy. Up until um, really the 19, early 1900s, um, how you got from place to place was either by foot, that's how you were a messenger, or by horse. That's how you, you know, even when the United States was founded, uh, uh, Paul Revere w rode his horse as a messenger from town to town to create messages, to send messages. King David did the same. Some in the, in the Book of Kings actually had, had fast runners who would run the messages to the king. Uh, and then knowledge came to and fro, and then things started happening faster. We, uh, uh, um, we identified and created the, uh, the combustible engine, the train, the car, and now we have airplanes, and we have supersonic uh, aircraft that goes to, the, to all over the universe. Uh, so th this is a two-fro two, two um, prophecy. One, at the end days, knowledge and technology will become greater and greater and greater and greater. And they're saying that every two years now, that computer technology doubles, which is just absolutely mind-boggling how, how, how things are going faster and faster, the new iPhones, the iPads, and the computers, and everything that they can do. That's part of what God was saying in this book of Daniel 4. But the true meaning of the knowledge shall increase means the knowledge of his glory meaning the knowledge of his word. And we're starting to see nuggets be in the word that have been hidden for years start to come to pass. It wasn't up until the 19th century that Sir Robert Anderson un un uncovered Daniel 9 prophecy, which was the exact date that our Messiah would announce himself, the King of Israel, on Palm Sunday to the day. It wasn't until the late 90s where... Um, it was uh, the first I heard it was uh, Grant Jeffries who uncovered the, the Ezekiel 4 prophecy that was so detailed that it prophesied the exact date that Israel would become a nation, 19, May 15th, 1948, or May 14th, 1948, um, to the exact detail. And then again, June 6th, 1967, the day they came to Israel. So God is revealing his knowledge across the world. And we're seeing technology allowing the Gospels to be preached from east to west to north to south. It wasn't up until really the last 10 to 15 years that the true Gospel could be spread to all the corners of the world. Remember Christ said, the Gospel shall come all over the world from east to west to north to south until I come back. And that is starting to happen. We see it with satellite TV. We're seeing it with internet. I just came back from Liberia. And even in Liberia, there's pockets of internet. You see that some people have cell phones are, are incredibly important. But there's one technology that is yet to come, um, and it's supposed to come out next year, where every single person in the globe will literally have internet access. There's uh, uh, Google, Facebook, uh, Telstra, and um, there's another big company. I mean, it may be Microsoft. What they're going to do is they're sending uh, three sets of teams are sending um, satellites out into outer space. And what those uh, will be done is to create wi free Wi-Fi to areas around the world that do not have Internet access. These big companies are doing it for advertising money um, so that the, these uh, remote areas can have access to the Internet. Um, but the Lord is using it for His glory so that His glory ministry can be seen and heard all around, even in the remote places of Africa where there is no Wi-Fi, they will be able to get it via satellite. Uh, Google is also using Google balloons, balloons that they're, they're putting up in strategic areas that will, will, will spread Wi-Fi to areas where they could not afford it in the past and areas that um, uh, was not cost effective to do in the past. And now those things are starting to happen. And 2016 seems to be the year that most of these companies are saying that these are going to be released. So at that point, you literally can say that the knowledge of the Lord, the Word of God, will be shared via the Internet and via satellite TV from every ounce of the world, exactly the way the Scripture has been told. Praise His holy name. So we get into Daniel 12.5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on the riverbank and another on the, river, on the other riverbank. And um, these are two angels that came down. We don't know who the angels are, but within the angels is a man. And this man, again, is the same man Daniel saw before, clothed in linen. That is none only that our high priest, Jesus Christ, who was above the waters and of the river. How long shall the fulfillment of these waters be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, 
again, above the waters. That's, that's Christ the Lord. When he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever, swore by the Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all acting in one unity. But it is the Son, Jesus Christ, who is the land redeemer, the kinsman redeemer, the Goel, that will come back. Remember in Revelation 4, where John wept when he was in the third heaven because nobody was worthy to un, uh, un, unravel the scroll. And the scroll is the land deed of the world. And only the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who paid that price on Calvary for each and every one of us, past, present, and future, can open up the land deed. And he's going to do that. We're seeing it coming to fruition as we speak. And Linden was above of the waters of Rev and swore by him who lives forever. And it shall be for a time, times, and a half a time. When the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. So he's talking about at the midpoint of the tri tribulation, the last three and a half years before our king comes back on a white horse with his saints and brings in justice once and for all and ushers in the Davidic covenant, the covenant that God has said throughout all the prophets that David will be my prince. David will be the king of Jerusalem and his father, it, the, the Holy Father and Son of the bloodline of David, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will rule on the mercy seat in the new Jerusalem with King David handling the responsibility of Jerusalem itself and Jesus Christ ushering in the one true government, the one true world, all through his glory, and that's Christ the Lord. Also, I heard and I didn't understand, then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? So Daniel is not understanding the end times, so he's asking for more clarity. And he says, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. So Jesus is telling him, go, don't worry about it. It's time, it'll be sealed to the time of the end. You notice we're talking about it. It's unsealed. It's time of the end. It's time for the Lord to come. And again, as we mentioned, the prophetic things that happened before uh, are happening in record number. We didn't know the prophecies of Daniel 9. We didn't know Ezekiel 4. We didn't know uh, Israel had to become a nation. Israel has to build the third temple. All the articles are ready to be built for the third temple. And it's my belief after the Ezekiel 38 and 39 war that that false hoodna that the Antichrist will bring in will allow Israel to build the third temple to fill prophecy to fulfill this event that in the midpoint the abomination of desolation sets forth and then it'll be three and a half years until Christ the King comes back to redeem the land. So these prophecies are being fulfilled. You look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel 40 through 48 is talking about the millennial reign kingdom. And one key thing that you look into there, you look at the monetary. The monetary number that Ezekiel's talking about is the shekel. The shekel was out of circulation being the currency for Israel for over 2,500 years. Even at the time that Jesus walked to earth, the shekel was not a, a, a form of currency. It wasn't until 1982 that Israel reestablished the shekel as the currency for the nation of Israel, fulfilling yet another prophecy in the book of Ezekiel. Praise God. All these events are happening in real time. We look at the, the, the prophets in, um, in, in Revelation, the two witnesses. How can all the world see their demise and their death? We would have to have technology. It's not a figure of speech. The world is going to see, my belief is it's Moses and Elijah that will be killed by the Antichrist, and then on the third day they rise up by the Lord, and the whole world's going to see it. We, the world needs to have... Uh, um, CCTVs to be able to see that. They need the satellite TVs and they need Wi-Fi through streaming video. Literally, the whole world will be able to see this event um, real soon. So God's prophecy with technology is being fulfilled before our very eyes and his prophecy is being fulfilled before our, our very eyes. Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand what the wise shall understand. Again, the wicked thought of the worldly ways earthly ways, intellectual ways, power, money, greed, everything but giving up self for our King of Kings, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the all, everything, and it's the only way. And we'll be made purified and white and refined because of him, giving up self and giving our, Lord, or giving our heart and our mind and our soul to our King of Kings and Lord of hosts. Praise his name. And from that time, the daily sacrifice is taken away. So this is the abomination of desolation. And the abomination of desolation is set up. There shall be 1,290 days. 
So 1,290 days. For some reason, that's 30 days beyond the day of the day of the Lord. You know, scholars go back and forth. Why is a 30-day difference between literal three and a half years from the time of Christ? We don't know that, but obviously Jesus, who is coming back to take the Kingsman Redeemer, the Goel, set up the Davidic Covenant, sit on the mercy seat, institute David as the king, again, the prince, um, literally, uh, is going to take some time. So there's a reason for God to have this 30-day of overlap. And we're going to see in verse 12, 12, Blessed he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. So there's a 75-day difference between the time the Lord comes and blessed he who waits. We don't know what that is. There's 75 days that are accounted for something that the Lord will do to set up his kingdom, to set up his glory, set up the, white, uh, set up the millennial reign. And we just trust in him. That it's for his glory. And his ways are higher than our ways. Some will argue back and forth. It's for this reason or that reason. It doesn't matter what reason it is. At that point, we're home with the Lord. If we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have glorified bodies, and we're with our King of Kings and our Lord of Hosts, and all our sins are washed away, and we're living without any pain or suffering or worry, but just unconditional love and praise his holy name. So whatever he's got planned in uh, Daniel 12, 12, is much greater than we could ever conceive in our fleshly minds. And praise him and give him glory. And we close in Daniel 12, 13, in the end of Daniel, which pray that this gives you a future and a hope. And not hope in the, in the, the English sense that we hope it doesn't rain. It's the hope that it's a promise. That promise is if we believe this word and accept the Holy Spirit into our heart and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have this home with our King. Praise his name. And it says, but you go your way to the end, for you shall rest. So Daniel will die of the flesh, but his soul lives on. And he'll rise to an inheritance at the end of the day. So Daniel will be resurrected just like the first covenant saint, all the rest of the first covenant saints to their glorified body. Those of the church will be captured in Thessalonica in the twinkling of an eye to a glorified body. And uh, those who have gone through the tribulation, the tribulation saints will be resurrected in their glorified body. And those end days, we should get our inheritance. And that inheritance is nothing you can buy on this earth and it's nothing that the world has ever seen because the, what the Lord has in store for those who love him, no mind can conceive, no eye can see, no ear can hear the things that the Lord has in store for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Praise his name because where we're going is beyond belief and it is glory. I pray that the book of Daniel has been an absolute blessing, gives you hope in a, in a future that our Lord Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior yet, I ask you to pray this prayer with me for everlasting life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. Anybody tells you there's any other way to heaven, it's false. That's not what the scripture says. Jesus Christ is the living word and the Holy Spirit is our comforter. It's our teacher of the spirit, teacher of God's word, Jesus' word. And he is the way, the truth, and the life, the only way. Dear Jesus, I repent of my sins and I believe in the scriptures that you died and after three days rose again to sit at the right hand of the Father and you're coming back to take over the world to be my King of King and Lord of Hosts. And I repent of my sins and I give you the keys to my life and let you run it because your ways are higher. If you prayed that prayer with me, you have everlasting life with the King of Kings and the Lord of Hosts. Praise his holy name. God bless you. Until next time.